Welcome to the Canadian edition of the Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Thank you, Andrew, for everything you've done, for the teachings that you do. It has affected every area of our life, my wife, our marriage, our kids, our business. So I just want to say thank you to you. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on what eternal life is. It is not just living forever. It's not just going to heaven instead of going to hell. And I think that most people, most Christians don't really understand what eternal life is. So that's what I'm teaching on this week. I've got this little pamphlet that I wrote entitled Eternal Life. It's just a brief introduction to it, but it is powerful. We also have CDs and DVDs that were taken from this program and a USB, and we'll be giving out all of the information about that at the end of this program. But this is really critical that you get this. I mentioned this yesterday, but I had somebody ask me, if you only had one chance to minister to people, what would you minister? And you know, that's a hard thing to say because people have a lot of different needs. But if I could only minister to people one time, I would tell them about how to have an intimate, close, personal relationship with God because if they got that, the Lord would teach them everything else that they need. So I really believe that this is foundational and yet there are many people that have bypassed this. There are many people, there's people watching this program right now that you know God exists, you have come to the Lord, you may have called out and have seen Him uh, heal you or prosper you or you go to Him when you're in trouble and you ask for things, but you don't have that close relationship with the Lord. Now there's some people that are just religious and they know about God, but they don't have a personal relationship. There are some people who are actually born again and you have a relationship to the degree that you've gotten your sins forgiven, but you're basically just saved and stuck waiting until the day that you get to go to heaven. And I mentioned some of these things yesterday, but this is the way that I was raised. In the Baptist church, they didn't believe in healing. Now again, there's individual Baptist church. I'm not against them, praise God. I got born again in the Baptist church, so I praise God for what they did. But as a whole, they don't preach healing. They don't teach prosperity. They don't teach victory. They teach that you are saved and stuck, and further along we'll know all about it. And in the sweet by and by, what a day that's going to be. When we all get to heaven, these are the songs that we sang. Another one was, Hold the Fort for I'm Coming. And it was all about just holding on to the Lord and looking forward to heaven because in this life you were going to have a lot of problems and you just hadn't learned to roll with the punches. And so there's a lot of people that have come to the Lord and you may possess salvation, but you don't possess an abundant life. You don't possess a intimate relationship with the Lord, and yet this is what the goal of salvation is. And it will, it will go to the next level. It will be amplified. It'll be light years better when we get to heaven. But right now, in this life, we should be rejoicing. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, it's talking about Jesus, and it says, "...who gave Himself for our sins, that He might deliver us from this present evil world." Not just the one to come. And see, there's many, many, many Christians who believe that salvation is all about getting your sins forgiven so that you won't go to hell, but instead you'll get to go to heaven. Well, that is a part of it, and that's a wonderful part of it. And if that's all there was to it, I'd preach that because that's more than any of us deserve. But no, He came to deliver us from this present evil world, not just the one to come. It also says in what's commonly called the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are supposed to be bringing all of the benefits and the great things that are going to be happening in heaven down into this life. On earth we should see His will done. It's His will for us to be healed and healthy. It's His will for us to prosper and, and uh, be in health, even as our soul prospers. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. It's His will for us to know Him and to have great relationships with other people in this life. And sad to say, there are so many Christians that aren't 
experiencing this abundant life. Jesus Himself said in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And if you take all of that in its context again, uh, in John chapter 10, He is talking about we're His sheep. We hear His voice. It's all talking about now. Now again, when we go to heaven, it's just going to be taken to the next level. And I praise God for what's going to happen in heaven. But we should be having this abundant life now. When Jesus talked to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, He wasn't talking to her about just future things, about heaven. He was saying that if you will drink this water, it'll be in you. He didn't say in heaven it'll be in you, but no, it'll be in you now springing up unto everlasting life. We should be having an awesome life now. I'm not denying that we have an enemy. I'm not denying that we have problems. I'm not denying that we live in a fallen world, but I am saying that the relationship with God and what He brings to our life is so awesome in this life that it just shrinks all of these problems and the things that we face here in this life down to nothing if you are experiencing this eternal life. Not talking about length of days living forever, but talking about an intimate, close, personal relationship with the Lord. Let me go back to John chapter 3. These are the verses that I was using yesterday. John chapter 3, verse 16 is probably one of the most uh, quoted, most known verses in the Bible and one of the least understood. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish. And let me just say that the way this is read and interpreted is it basically puts a period right there. That the reason Jesus came was to die for our sins so that we wouldn't perish, so that we wouldn't go to hell. And you will hear people in churches all around the world preaching, Jesus loves you so much, He doesn't want you to go to hell. And so He died for your sins so that you wouldn't go to hell. And that's the message. And that's true. But that's not all that there is to it. It's not complete. It goes on to say the reason He died was so that we wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. And on yesterday's program, I think I read six verses in John that shows that this everlasting life is right now, not in the future. Right here in the last verse of this third chapter, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Not future is going to have it, but has it right now. So the real purpose of salvation was to bring us into this relationship that is called everlasting life. Let me go over to John chapter 17 and read this to you. Jesus is called the author and the finisher of our faith. He's also called the author of eternal life. And so here's the author of eternal life praying a prayer the night before he was arrested. This is right before they came to Gethsemane and arrested him. And this is his prayer that he prayed. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Here we are talking about eternal life, everlasting life. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And in verse 3, he says, And this is life eternal. So here's Jesus defining it. He's the author of eternal life. So what does he say that eternal life is? This is life eternal that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. That's eternal life, is knowing God the Father and Jesus Christ. And some of you watching this are thinking, well, man, that's disappointing. I know God, but I'm certainly not walking in the abundance and all of these kind of things in this eternal life, that this uh, uh, life more abundantly that Jesus talked about in John 10.10. 10. I thought it was something more than that. I know God. Again, this isn't uh, the way, the way that we use the word know isn't the way that the Bible uses it. You can turn over to Genesis chapter 4. Right there, the first verse, it says, Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bare a son. And then you can go on, and Cain knew his wife. And the word know in the Bible is talking about more than just intellectual knowledge. 
It's talking about intimacy, an intimacy that even produces the birth of a child. And I'm not going to explain all of this on international television, but hopefully everybody understands how a child comes. It has to be a little bit more intimate than just knowing a person, just knowing about him, standing next to him. You've got to have that intimacy that produces a child. This is what this is talking about. When it says that eternal life is knowing God the Father and Jesus Christ, whom He has sent, it is talking about an intimate, close, personal relationship with God. That's how Jesus defined eternal life. And this is not something that just takes place in the future. I've been making this point yesterday and today, but it's talking about right now we have eternal life. The reason that Jesus died for our sins, John 3, 16, was not just so that we could not perish. That's part of it, but so that we could have eternal life, intimate, close, relationship with God that doesn't start just when you get to heaven. It will be amplified. It will be complete when we get to heaven. But He died for our sins to bring us into this intimate, close relationship with Him to where He's our best friend. He talks to us. We talk to Him. He's guiding our life. He's giving us strength to overcome the problems that we face. We aren't having to deal with all of the junk that is being thrown at us in this life in just our own strength. We have a supernatural strength. As Paul said, we, it's not us living, but it's Christ living in us. And the life which we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us. It is a supernatural, abundant life. That's what Jesus came to give us in this life, not just in the future. So let me say John 3, 16 this way. This will shock some of you, but it's absolutely true that if all you did was come to Jesus and ask Him to forgive your sins so that you wouldn't die and go to hell, but instead you'd go to heaven, and if you got that so that if you died right now, you'd go to heaven. I'm not saying that that didn't happen, but if that's all you got, if that's all you were looking for, if that's what salvation is to you, then you have missed the real purpose of salvation. The purpose of salvation wasn't to forgive your sins. It was just the fact that sin separated us from God. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2 makes that clear. Sin separated us from God, and God wanted an intimate, close, personal relationship with us, not just in the future, but right now in this life. And so in order to have that relationship, He did die for your sins. He did pay for your sins. And you can be totally forgiven, and when you die, you will go to heaven instead of hell. All of that is true, but He did all of that so that He could have this close, intimate, personal relationship with you right now, not just in the future. And if you don't have that, then you're missing the number one purpose of salvation. The number one purpose wasn't just to bring you to heaven. It was God wanted relationship with you, not just in the future, but right now. It'll be complete. It'll be magnified, amplified in the future. But He wants relationship with you right now. He wants to speak to you today. I don't care what you're facing. There's people watching this program that you're, you've got a death sentence. There's other people that you may not be dying from it, but man, your life is miserable. You got pain. You've got financial problems. You got relational problems. You don't have a clue about what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, and you're just struggling on so many levels. Jesus wants to be able to communicate with you and have a relationship with you, and you're just one word from God away from any of those things, being totally healed, being totally straightened out. He's got an answer for whatever it is that you're dealing with, and He longs to be in relationship with you so that He could speak to you and tell you and guide you and help you through those things. I know some of you that are listening to this, I, it's shocking because you acknowledge that He exists. You may have even prayed and asked Him to forgive you of your sins so you'd go to heaven, but to think that He wants to deliver you from sickness, from disease, from poverty, from depression, from sadness, that He can be intimately involved in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, this is just off the radar of the average Christian. You know why? Because it's not been preached. 
It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And if the way you've heard John 3, 16, is God loved you so, and He paid for your sins so that you wouldn't go to hell, but instead you go to heaven. If that's the message that you got out of that, well, then you don't have faith to believe for an intimate relationship, a personal relationship where God is dealing with you. Most, most people who are preaching, quote, unquote, the gospel, haven't included this intimate relationship with God as part of the gospel. Or if they do mention it, it's going to be when we get to heaven, what a day that will be. And we, we start from there. But they haven't presented this, that God wants an intimate relationship with you right now and that He can be your best friend, that you can talk to Him. He'll talk back to you. He'll give you wisdom and revelation. This isn't something reserved for just the preachers, just the full-time Christian people. It isn't just the professional Christians. This is for every Jane uh, Doe and John Blow Christian that there is. You're supposed to all have this intimate relationship. So that's what it's saying. God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son so that you would not perish, but that you could come into this relationship with God right now to where God is the strength of your life. I'm telling you, I deal with lots of people, lots of people. And I, I go to meetings and I, I may talk to two or three hundred people on a personal basis. I go out before our meetings and stay there for an hour and I visit with people. And I talk to hundreds and hundreds of people plus our Bible school. I've just dealt with thousands of people. And I can tell you from my experience that the vast majority, I'd say 80 percent or more of the people who come to me wanting me to pray for healing, wanting me to pray for direction, wanting me to pray for their marriage, and on and on you go. I, the vast majority, 80 percent or more, they know God exists. They know about God, but they don't have an intimate relationship with God. They don't come... Uh, you know, they're looking to me, to my intimate relationship with God to be able to help them. And to a degree, I don't mind that because none of us are born again totally mature. We have to grow and mature. And so I understand that there's times that we need help and things like that. So I'm not saying that I resent trying to help people, but it's sad that people that have been born again for 10, 20, 30 years, they can't hear from God. They don't know what God's will for their life is. They don't know how to operate in faith. They're born again. They're saved, but they're stuck. And you know, the church that I was raised in, again, I say that they didn't believe in real victory in this life, so they didn't preach healing, deliverance, prosperity, joy, peace, etc., etc. They basically just preached that the purpose of salvation was to get your sins forgiven and go to heaven. And then the only other thing that they preached, every message was a salvation mes message. Every Sunday when you went, it was how to get born again. It was some different approach. They took the person in the third chapter of the book of Acts and instead of teaching you that he physically got healed, the man who was lame, lame at the gate of the temple and Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk. They would take that passage and they would teach that we're all spiritually lame and we need the touch of God to be born again. And they would turn that into a salvation message. They would take everything and turn it into a salvation message, which in a way is okay. I got born again listening to it. But I remember after I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and read Acts chapter 3, I mean, I was 18 years old before it ever dawned on me that that man in the third chapter of the book of Acts was physically healed. It had been spiritualized so much and talked about how we need the Lord so that we can go to heaven. And so that's what people preach. And in the vast majority of churches that are preaching anything close to the true gospel, that's what it's going to be. They're going to tell you about how you can have an eternal relationship with God in heaven instead of going to hell. And as good as that is, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If they don't ever preach that not only do you get your sins forgiven and not only do you get a ticket to heaven, but you also now have access to know God, 
NOT JUST IN AN INTELLECTUAL SENSE, BUT IN A PERSONAL SENSE, IN A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. IF YOU AREN'T PREACHING THAT, AND IF YOU AREN'T SAYING THAT THAT IS SOMETHING THAT'S NOT RESERVED FOR HEAVEN, BUT IT'S FOR RIGHT NOW IN THIS LIFE, PEOPLE AREN'T GOING TO HAVE FAITH FOR IT, AND PEOPLE AREN'T GOING TO BELIEVE FOR IT. AND THIS IS MY EXPERIENCE. WHEN I HAVE THESE PEOPLE COME TO ME AND I TALK TO THEM, I WOULD SAY THAT 80% OF THEM, THEY KNOW ABOUT GOD, AND THEY MAY EVEN BE BORN AGAIN SO THAT IF THEY WERE TO DIE, THEY'D GO TO HEAVEN INSTEAD OF HELL, BUT THEY CAN'T HEAR FROM GOD. THEY DON'T HAVE THE PEACE OF GOD FLOWING IN THEM. IF A DOCTOR TELLS THEM THEY'RE GOING TO DIE, THEY FALL APART LIKE A $2 SUITCASE. <laughs> THEY SING EVERY WEEK ABOUT WHEN WE ALL GET TO HEAVEN, WHAT A DAY THAT'S GOING TO BE. AND THEN THE DOCTOR TELLS THEM THEY'RE GOING AND THEY START CRYING. MAN, THAT'S AN INDICATION THAT YOU DON'T HAVE THIS PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. IF WE WERE WALKING WITH THE LORD THE WAY THAT IS AVAILABLE TO US, WE COULD BE LIKE THE APOSTLE PAUL THAT SAYS, MAN, FOR ME TO LIVE IS CHRIST AND TO DIE IS EVEN BETTER. I'M IN A STRAIGHT BETWEEN TWO. I WANT TO GO TO BE WITH THE LORD SO MUCH THAT I'D RATHER DO THAT, BUT IT'S MORE NEEDFUL THAT I STAY HERE FOR YOU. OUT OF PHILIPPIANS CHAPTER 1. THAT'S WHAT AN INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD DOES. AN INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD ALLOWS YOU TO BE LIKE PAUL AND SILAS THAT WHEN THEY WERE BEATEN, AND THEIR FEET AND THEIR HANDS WERE PUT IN THE STOCKS AND THEY WERE IN THE DUNGEON AT MIDNIGHT. AND INSTEAD OF GRIPING AND COMPLAINING AND CRYING OUT TO GOD, GOD, WHY DID YOU LET THIS HAPPEN? OH, GOD, GET ME OUT OF HERE. THEY JUST BROKE OUT INTO SONG. THEY WERE PRAISING GOD. AND WHEN THE EARTHQUAKE CAME AND THEIR BANDS WERE LOOSED, THEY DIDN'T PRAISE GOD SO THAT THEY COULD GET SOMETHING AND GET OUT OF THERE. THEY ACTUALLY STAYED THERE, EVEN AFTER THEY COULD HAVE LEFT. SO HERE'S A RADICAL THING. YOU KNOW WHAT? THEY WERE PRAISING GOD NOT IN ORDER TO GET SOMETHING, BUT THEY WERE PRAISING GOD BECAUSE THEY WERE ACTUALLY EXCITED AND IN LOVE AND PRAISING GOD FOR WHO HE WAS. THERE'S EVEN SOME CHRISTIANS THAT HAVE LEARNED THAT PRAISE IS POWERFUL, SO THEY'LL DO IT THROUGH GRITTED TEETH BECAUSE THEY'RE FIGHTING THE DEVIL AND TRYING TO GET SOMETHING. AND AGAIN, THAT'S NOT TOTALLY WRONG. BUT YOU CAN GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE IN THE MIDST OF A CRISIS SITUATION, YOU GO TO PRAISING GOD, BECAUSE YOU REALLY LOVE GOD, BECAUSE YOU JUST HAVE SUCH A GREAT RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT EVEN IF YOU'RE GOING TO DIE, MAN, FATHER, what, a, WHAT AN AWESOME THING. IF I DIE, I GET TO SEE YOU. AND IF I GET HEALED, I GET TO RUB THE DEVIL'S NOSE IN THIS AND USE THIS AS A TESTIMONY. AND YOU CAN ACTUALLY GET TO A PLACE THAT REGARDLESS OF WHAT THE DEVIL THROWS AT YOU, YOU JUST ARE IN LOVE WITH GOD AND YOU KNOW THAT YOU'RE GOING TO COME OUT SMELLING LIKE A ROSE. YOU'RE GOING TO WIN REGARDLESS OF WHAT THE DEVIL DOES. YOU CAN HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT THE BIBLE CALLS ETERNAL LIFE. AND IT'S DIFFERENT FROM WHAT MOST PEOPLE THINK ETERNAL LIFE IS. SO THIS IS WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT THIS WEEK, AND I PROMISE YOU, IF YOU CAN UNDERSTAND THIS, THIS WOULD PUT YOUR WHOLE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD ON A BRAND NEW FOUNDATION. AND I THINK THAT MOST CHRISTIANS ARE MISSING THIS. SO I WANT TO GIVE YOU THIS LITTLE PAMPHLET THAT I WROTE AND THIS IS JUST A VERY BRIEF EXPLANATION, BUT IT'S POWERFUL. IT'S GOT THE FOUNDATION, the, THE MEAT OF THIS IN HERE, AND THIS IS MY FREE GIFT TO YOU. WE'RE GIVING THIS TO ANYBODY WHO WILL uh, GO TO OUR WEBSITE OR CALL AND ASK FOR IT. WE'LL GIVE THIS TO YOU AS OUR GIFT. AND YOU KNOW, THIS WOULD NOT ONLY BE SOMETHING GOOD FOR YOU TO READ, BUT THIS IS JUST A REAL BRIEF THING THAT YOU COULD PUT IT ON A TABLE. IF YOU HAVE A BUSINESS OR SOMETHING LIKE THIS, IT'D BE A GREAT THING FOR PEOPLE TO READ. I GUARANTEE YOU IT WILL GRAB THEIR ATTENTION AND OPEN THEM UP TO A RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD. WE ALSO HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM THIS PROGRAM. WE HAVE A USB THAT WILL HAVE THE AUDIO AND VIDEO ON IT. AND I PROMISE YOU, THIS IS THE KIND OF THING YOU NEED TO HAVE THIS TO REMIND YOURSELF. PEOPLE FORGET THIS. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, I'M SURE THAT MOST OF YOU WOULD AGREE WITH ME THAT THIS WORLD IS IN A CRISIS. I MEAN, WE'RE SEEING THINGS HAPPEN THAT I WOULDN'T HAVE EVER THOUGHT I WOULD HAVE SEEN IN MY LIFE. AND THIS ISN'T ONLY TRUE OF THE U.S., IT'S TRUE WORLDWIDE. AND ONE OF THE THINGS THAT THE LORD HAS LED ME TO DO THAT I BELIEVE IS HAVING A GLOBAL IMPACT IS OUR Caris BIBLE COLLEGE. WE'VE GOT OFFICES IN 20 DIFFERENT COUNTRIES. WE'VE GOT BIBLE SCHOOLS SCATTERED ALL OVER THE WORLD. WE HAVE OVER 9,000 PEOPLE THAT ARE INVOLVED IN OUR SCHOOL. AND HERE AT OUR MAIN CAMPUS IS WHERE WE PRODUCE MOST OF THE MATERIAL. ALL OF THE VIDEOS AND ALL OF THE THINGS THAT ARE BEING DONE WORLDWIDE COME OUT OF HERE. AND WE HAVE JUST BEGUN A MAJOR BUILDING PROGRAM HERE IN WOODLAND PARK. AND I KNOW THAT MANY OF YOU 
watch this program. We have the potential of over 5 billion people watching this program any single day. But we have millions of people, and I know many of you have been touched by this ministry. It's changing your life. And I'm just saying that because of me. I'm saying it because I know the power that's in God's Word, and I've seen thousands of people's lives change. And I'm asking you that if God has touched you, I'm asking you to pray about helping us reach more people and train up people that can go out and spread this. Go to awmi.net slash campus. We've got a partnership entitled Foundation Builders. And you can not only sign up and become a partner with us, but there is a video there that will show you these buildings and it will show you inside of these buildings. I believe it will really encourage you. I believe that God has raised Karis up to be a major factor in these last days. So check it out. Go to awmi.net slash campus, watch the video, pray about it, and join with us and become a foundation builder today. I'd like to encourage you to call in. And I know that God is speaking to many, many people, and you may have had the Lord touch you today. And if you just need somebody to touch and agree with you, the scripture says, if any two of you agree touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father. So we have these people, I mean powerful people who love God and are equipped in the Word of God. They're there to pray with you and help you. Call that number on your screen. We'd love to pray with you. Andrew is offering his booklet, Eternal Life, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Eternal Life, is available as a CD, DVD, and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website at awmc.ca. Click on Today's TV Offer under the Store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Carius Bible College, Toronto. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support and we look forward to hearing from you today.